Good morning. Billy, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. Determine the escape velocity of planet Earth. Assume no air resistance and no planet rotation. Your knowns are the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and the average radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Escape velocity equals question mark. No air resistance and no planet rotation. Mass of Earth equals 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and average Earth radius equals 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Mr. P, what is escape velocity? The escape velocity of a planet is the minimum velocity at which an object can be launched and have it completely escape the gravitational attraction of a planet. In other words, in the absence of air resistance, the escape velocity is the minimum velocity at which we would need to launch Bo upward such that he would never return to the planet. There is no way to completely escape the gravitational attraction of a planet, right? I mean, you would have to be infinitely far away, which is impossible. That's a valid point, Bo. Perhaps it would be better to say you are moving fast enough such that it would take an infinite amount of time to slow you down to a stop. Okay, so if we launched Bo upward with a velocity smaller than the escape velocity, he will not escape the gravitational pull of the Earth and will eventually fall back to the surface of the planet, right? That is correct, Billy. What would happen if we launched him with a velocity larger than the escape velocity? Bobby, in just a little bit, we will answer that question. Why are we launching me? Bobby, there is no energy converted to heat or sound via friction, and no energy added to or removed from the system via a force applied. Therefore, what equation can we use? That means we can use conservation mechanical energy, which is mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Did we not use a force applied to give Bo that velocity? Yes, Billy, there, there must have been a force which gave Bo the escape velocity. However, this whole problem is after Bo is given that velocity. Therefore, it is after that force was applied. Bo, what do we need to identify before we can use conservation of mechanical energy? The locations of the initial and final points and the location of the horizontal zero line. Bo, please identify those. Let's put the initial point on the surface of the planet for the final point I will completely escape the gravitational pull of the Earth, so in the end I will be infinitely far away. Therefore, the final point is infinitely far from the Earth for the zero line. Yeah, so we, we need to use universal gravitational potential energy for this problem, so the zero line is predetermined and is infinitely far away from the planet. Can we not just use the uniformly accelerated motion equations to solve this? Uh, no, we can't. The acceleration due to gravity decreases as Bo is moving away from the planet, so we cannot use the uniformly accelerated motion equations. And actually, that is why we have to use the universal gravitational potential energy equation. Bobby, what sorts of energy does Bo start and end with? Initially, there is negative gravitational potential energy, since universal gravitational potential energy is always negative. And Bo has an initial velocity, so he has an, a, an initial kinetic energy. With regards to final energy, uh, because we are looking for the minimum launch velocity, Bo's final velocity will be zero, just like a ball thrown upward will have a final velocity at the top of zero, so no final kinetic energy. And Bo ends infinitely far from the Earth, so no gravitational potential energy. And I guess I will mention there is no elastic potential energy of any sort in the problem. Uh, substituting in equations gives us the negative of the universal gravitational constant times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by r, uh, the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects, uh, plus 1 half mass times velocity squared equals 0. Uh, oh, and I can now answer my own question. If Bo is launched at a velocity which is greater than the escape velocity, then we, he will have a velocity greater than zero when he gets to his final position infinitely far away from planet Earth, which will probably take an infinite amount of time. Uh, in other words, he will end with some kinetic energy rather than zero mechanical energy. That makes sense. We can move gravitational potential energy to the right side 
and substitute in the mass of Bo for mass 1 in the universal gravitational potential energy equation and the mass in the kinetic energy equation. Mass 2 is the mass of the Earth. The initial distance between the centers of mass of Bo and the Earth is the radius of the Earth, and the initial velocity is Bo's initial velocity. And then we can say, Everybody, everybody brought the mass of Bo to, to the party. party. That means every object, regardless of mass, has the same escape velocity. We don't have to launch me. It could be any object. It could be a donut. Everybody brought mass. mass. And we can solve for the escape velocity, which is the square root of the quantity 2 times the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth, all divided by the radius of the Earth. And now, Billy, we can substitute in numbers to get roughly 11.2 kilometers per second, or roughly 25,000 miles per hour as the escape velocity of planet Earth. In other words, if we launch Bo upwards at 25,000 miles per hour, he will never fall back to the surface of the planet. In the absence of air resistance. Right. And Mr. P. Yes, Billy? I just noticed something. Going back to conservation of mechanical energy, we showed the initial kinetic energy equals the positive value of the initial gravitational potential energy. Uh, that is the same as the binding energy of the planet, which we determined in the last lesson. Bo's initial kinetic energy necessary to completely remove him from the planet equals the binding energy of the planet. And that totally makes sense. Nice. That is absolutely correct, Billy. The initial kinetic energy necessary to completely remove an object from another object is the same as the binding energy which exists between those two objects. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.